Welcome back. For the first time this season, Coach Jay Gruden's team returned from a road trip happy. The Burgundy and Gold breaking their road winless streak with a 24-21 victory over the Chicago Bears, a win that keeps Washington in a tie for first in the NFC East. Tom Threlkeld, editor-in-chief of the D.C. Pro Sports Report, joins us now with analysis. Good to have you here. Thanks very much for popping in. Great to be here. Good Bruce. to have Thanks. you here. You started to wonder. It was, it, it was an open question until... 24 hours or so ago, would this team ever find the win column on the road? Fortunately, they put together a good performance against a team that is not so good and got a win that could not have come at a better time when you consider all that is happening in the NFC East right now. That's right. Look, the Bears are not a bad team, but they haven't played well at home in Soldier Field this year. Only one win. They're sort of the opposite of Washington. And uh, they, they lost last week to the lowly San Francisco 49ers in Soldier Field. So Washington didn't exactly uh, scale Mount Everest uh, on Sunday, but they got a win, and for them, that's a big deal. They had to have this win because it's going to take at least wins, eight wins to win the NFC East. There will be no wild card coming out of that division, obviously. So one team, the division winner, will get it, and they are in a first-place tie with Philadelphia. Like Philadelphia, they control their own destiny. Either team can, will win. One of those two teams can win the division if they win all three games. But both of them can't win all three games right. because they still play each other in the second to last week of the season. So week 16 looms very, very large. Not for Absolutely. the first time does a head-to-head -head matchup in the NFC East uh, lie as a, this, as a determining. Right. This is the way the schedule makers dreamt it when, when they were uh, drawing it up. They just probably hoped that the teams would have better records. So for the Eagles, and I, we were going to talk about uh, Washington, of course, but mm -hmm. for the Eagles it does mean week 16 against Washington, right. week 17 against New York this will determine the division. That's right. That's, that's huge for Philadelphia. Um, Washington has a small advantage over Philadelphia and New York in the sense that their schedule is a little bit easier going forward. This coming week, Washington will play Buffalo at home. That's not an easy game. Buffalo is a tenacious team, good defense, but it's winnable. Now, Arizona, uh, um, Philadelphia has to go to play the Arizona Cardinals, who are 11-2. and two. That's a very tough game to win. I would not favor Philadelphia in that game. The Giants have an even tougher road. If they win tonight against Miami in Miami, as I expect they probably will, the Dolphins are not a good team, they have to play the undefeated Carolina Panthers. That's a brutal game. The Panthers won't be resting starters because they're trying to get 16-0. They're, they're looking at history here. So that's a tough game for them. After that, um, uh, the Giants have to play um, Philly. Uh, well, they, first they have to play Minnesota, oh before, in, in, who are 8-5, and, and at the sixth, the sixth playoff spot, the second wild card. So they'll be fighting tooth and nail, and then finally they end in Philadelphia. So it's going to be a real race to the finish here for all these teams. New York can set it up to be absolutely thrilling if they do the expected and win tonight. Uh, what did you see yesterday? That, uh, what, what were the factors that led to the win? Well, <clears throat> we saw another solid game from Kirk Cousins. He made a couple of mistakes as quarterbacks ten, tend to do. He got very lucky on a crazy scramble play where he threw across his body uh, uh, back to the other side of the field and got lucky and got a, a catch on that play for a big play. Um, but he, the big story yesterday was, was Jordan Reed, the tight end, who was uncoverable. He's played the Chicago Bears now twice. He's destroyed them twice. They don't ever want to see him again. Um, he, well, hit nine passes were thrown his way. He caught all nine of them for 120 yards, one touchdown, about 12 inches from another touchdown. He was, he was really fantastic. And when you consider that this is a player who's missed two games this year, yet he leads Washington in catches, receiving yards, touchdowns, and first downs. It's, it's remarkable. There's, and he has seven touchdowns. No one else in the team has more than four. Four is Kirk Cousins' rushing touchdowns. He had another one yesterday. So the offense is really increasingly centered around Jordan Reed. There's an issue that came up uh, uh, yesterday, though. Derek Carrier, the other tight end, got hurt. And they didn't have anyone else active. And Washington's offense really went kind of into a shutdown mode after Carrier's injury. And the problem was Washington was having great success with two tight ends, Carrier and Reed. And that enables them to use a lot of bootlegs and rollouts where Kirk Cousins is very effective. Once the second tight end went out, they only had Reed, who is not a very good blocker. They couldn't use those rollout and bootlegs the same way. The offense changed dramatically, and it was clear on the field the production really dropped. 
So they need to get a, if it's not going to be Carrier, he's got an MRI coming up, I think, today. It's not going to be Carrier. It's got to be someone else, Jerron Ham or someone who's got to step forward at that tight end position and be a, a, a plausible pl player at that position for their offense to run efficiently in the final three games. We're still not seeing the running game fire on no. all cylinders, but some of the commentators I heard this morning on the radio liked uh, Matt Jones's intensity. I mean, the numbers were good, not great, but there was something about the determination he showed that uh, that you know perhaps has been has perhaps has been lacking perhaps can be useful down the road. Yeah, look, there were a number of plays there, particularly in, in the fourth quarter, where I thought he ran through holes that just weren't there. The, there are major blocking problems, run blocking problems for the for Washington's offensive line. It starts with very poor blocking from the tight end position, and then they are not getting very much blocking from center and from left guard. Both of those positions, all three of those positions have been radically affected by injuries. But injuries happen in the NFL. You have to be prepared for them, and Washington wasn't. And that's a huge problem for them. What I liked from Jones yesterday, not that he, he only averaged about three and a half yards a carry, not, nothing special. But like I said, he was running through holes that weren't there. And on a, on a soggy day, it was a wet ball field, it was raining, Washington gave him the ball in the fourth quarter. He didn't fumble. That might sound like a you know, small victory, but for Jones, it's a real accomplishment. He's had ball security issues uh, this season, obviously, very, some very costly fumbles. Gruden trusted him enough to give him the ball in the fourth quarter, and he didn't betray that trust. He held on to the ball and had some big runs at the end to secure the win. So, yes, I agree. Matt Jones uh, was impressive yesterday. In terms of this team's perception of itself, you look, uh, there, there was a lot of talk before the season and all that preseason discussion usually is fairly worthless by the time you get yeah. 8, 10, 12 weeks in. But few people thought this was going to be a breakout year for Washington. And, and to be candid, they're still under 500, but playing meaningful games. Do you think this team's perception of itself is, do, do you think they're close to turning the page and, and, and building a foundation here that can be something for a couple of years? Well, they've made some progress. Obviously, the development of Kirk Cousins is a huge story. And one of the big issues for the rest of the year and, and going into the, into the next year is going to be what Washington does with Kirk Cousins. That's going to be the number one contract -wise. decision. Right. He's going to be a free agent, an unrestricted free agent. So that's going to be a huge issue. And his development this season into a pretty good quarterback has been a big issue. I know In a, a league where teams are really, I mean, teams that don't have an Aaron Rodgers or a Tom Brady, which is to say most teams are really palpably struggling to right. find There something. is a strict segregation in the NFL. There are teams who have quarterbacks and teams that don't. Teams that don't reside where the Washington has spent for the most of the last 20 some odd years. And developing a quarterback like Kirk Cousins, who he seems to be, you know, in, uh, at least middling mm -hmm. this, this season, is a big improvement over what they've had since 2012. Um, I think Washington sees, himself as, sees themselves as scrappy. As, teams, as, as a team that is giving itself a chance and has proven resilient. I agree with that. They have proven resilient. There's a number of games where they've, they've really gotten blown out and they come back the next week and, and, and get a win. I mean, this was a good example. That loss on Monday night to Dallas was terrible, and that was a real gut punch. And the players left the locker room looking like, you know, they just lost a member of the family. They came back and got a big win. That was important. And they've proven resilient in games. They, they lost their lead here. 20, uh, they were up 14-0. It was tied 21 all. Bears had all the momentum, and Kirk Cousins led them on the, on the winning field goal drive. On the other hand, while they have resiliency, what they don't have is consistency. They, they, they got one monkey off their back by winning a road game, but they have another monkey to get off their back, and they can do that on Sunday against Buffalo, and that is winning back-to-back -back games. Mm. They haven't done it since week seven and week eight of last season. That's really bad. Teams, you know, any decent team has got to be able to, win, you know, put together a streak of wins, three, four wins in a row, and they need to get on it, and they need to do it now. Uh, we've talked a lot about the offense. Do you want to talk about uh, the defense or special teams play at all? Yeah, the, the defense has, I think they only had three starters last, last uh, yesterday who were, who were, at, supposed, they were at the position they were supposed to be at when the season began. Wow. Uh, that's really remarkable. They did not have a dominating game at all, but there were some big plays. We saw some really good job stepping up Terrence Knighton, who used his familiarity with Adam Gase, the play caller for Chicago, who last year was the play caller in Denver, where, where Terrence Knighton played. Terrence Knighton had a big game. We saw a very nice game from uh, Ryan Kerrigan uh, and Trent Murphy, their outside linebackers, and another good game from Bashad Breeland. Um, they are going to need some of this defensive stoutness going forward. They have, to be, they have to be much better against the run. As the weather turns bad, teams are going to try to run on Washington. Um, certainly Buffalo is going to try to do that with LaShawn McCoy, and they have a very good running quarterback, Tyrod Taylor. So 
We're going to need to see real improved play from that front seven in Washington. The back seven is what it is, riddled with injuries and very young. They're going to have to do the best they can. Dallas got waxed by Green Bay. Four yep. wins. I, I, surely they may not be. They may not be mathematically out, but Dallas they're, would. They're would out, they'd have to win it. their last three, and everyone else would have to lose enough games. So it's, it's unlikely. It's not Dallas, unlikely. and it's unlikely to be the Giants because of their shoddy play. Giving up a lot, of, giving up a lot of leads late, and their schedule now is just not favorable. Carolina is undoubtedly the best team in the league. Yeah. Maybe Seattle second, New England third, uh, Arizona, Cincinnati less so now with with Carson Palmer out. Um, uh, so Andy Dalton. Andrew. Andy Dalton. Thank you. And so uh, you're looking at the Eagles and Washington. It's hard. It's impossible to know from week to week which Eagles team is going to show up. They've been great and they've been terrible. I know it's amazing. The Eagles were left for dead a couple of weeks ago. Then they did the unthinkable. They beat the New England Patriots, and suddenly they're back. If they lost that game, they would be out, and really Washington would be in the driver's seat despite being six and seven. Um, that's right. Look, it's going to come down to these final two weeks when all these NFC East teams play each other. Washington has to. This is why Washington has to start. This, this win in Chicago is so important to get mm -hmm. wins on the road because these final two games are on the road at Philadelphia and at Dallas. They've got to win those games. They won at Dallas last year with, uh, with a backup quarterback um, so, uh, on Monday night. So they can do it, but they've got to start doing it. It really comes down to the two teams that control their own destiny, Washington and Philadelphia. They have no excuses. And we'll be talking in the next few weeks about uh, the last couple of games. I'm starting to think ahead about Dallas with nothing to play for but pride, yeah. playing at home in spoiler mode. They'd love to do it. You know, sometimes you see the team that has more at, more at stake. They can be tense. They, they, know what the, the, they know the meaning of the yeah. game. The other team is going out and playing for fun and to That's ruin right. the other guy's chances. They'd so love nothing more than to break hearts in D.C. At home, to yes, do it right. at home to wrap up the season. It'll be fascinating. Yes. And great to have meaningful games in D.C. Finally. In December to That's talk right. about. Right? Uh, our friend Tom Throckout of the D.C. Pro Sports Report. Thanks for being here today. My pleasure. Good to see you as always. When we return, we'll go one-on-one -on -one with a News Channel 8 original, the great Glenn Harris. Keep it here.